Hi. In the previous sessions, we learnt about the terms inheritance, variations, various other new terms in genetics, and uh, we learnt about Gregor Mendel, and also regarding monohybrid cross and how he did that monohybrid cross. In the present session, let's learn about the two laws that Gregor Mendel has framed on inheritance based on his monohybrid cross. So based on monohybrid cross, Mendel proposed two laws of inheritance. Those were law of dominance and law of segregation. I hope you remember the term dominance that I uh, mentioned in the previous video. Dominance. Isn't it? So according to this law of dominance, characters are controlled by discrete units called factors. This was also already mentioned in the previous uh, session. Each character in our body is controlled by small small units and those units Mendel termed it as factors. So the first postulate or the first sentence of law of dominance, first postulate is characters are controlled by discrete. Discrete means for each one there is there's a separate separate unit. Discrete, unique. Discrete units called factors. Now we know what these factors are as genes. Now we call these factors as genes but Mendel called those discrete units which control the characters as factors. Next Next, regarding factors, what are these factors? Factors occur in pairs. Factors occur in pairs. What is that pairs? It is there in pairs of chromosomes. We know organisms, most of the organisms, especially the pea plant that he has taken is deployed in nature. So, for every character, there is a factor and this factor occurs on as pairs, on pairs of chromosomes actually. But Mendel did not know anything about the chromosomes. But he postulated that these factors occur in pairs. Now we know that those factors, that pairs are pairs of homologous chromosomes. Okay. Next. In a dissimilar pair of factors, dissimilar pair of factors, one member of the pair dominates the other. This is the actual law. Of dominance. See the word here coming. Just coming here. Dominates. So when you state the law. You have to state all the three statements. Among this. This is the most. This is the essence of this law. Okay. See. In a dissimilar pair of factors. One member of the pair. Dominates the other. See here. Monohybrid cross. This cross. Is the, the only character that is differing. For it is height. Parents are true breeding. Okay. True breeding means both the alleles are same. All these alleles and true breeding I have already explained in the previous sessions. Hmm? So here you can see here the two alleles are same. Capital T, capital T, small t, small t. After that the next step is formation of gametes where the alleles separate out. And again they unite and they form the first generation or F1 generation where you can see here the alleles are different. So this the factors are different. So this in dissimilar pair. In a dissimilar pair of factors what happens? Both the characters cannot be expressed. Tall and dwarf cannot come together. One factor will dominate the other. Which is dominating? The tall factor here is dominating the dwarf. So the phenotype, the appearance of the plant will be tall. So Mendel got all tall plants. Okay, how did he confirm this? He did self-pollination of F1. Self-pollination of F1 means parents are the same. Parents are the same and then again gametes are formed. And after F1 what did he get? F2, three tall plants and one dwarf plant. So, the character dwarf is again coming here back. So, in one generation it is suppressed. In the other generation it is expressed. So, that is the third statement. In a dissimilar pair of factors, 
one member of the pair dominates the other the 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 member which is dominating will form the dominant trait and the member which is not expressed or it is suppressed forms the recessive trait so law of dominance i hope it is clear to you shall we move on to law of segregation now okay law of segregation you should know the meaning of the word here segregation segregation simply means separation separation of what separation of alleles when during gamete formation so this law is very simple what is the law alleles separate out during gamete formation so law of segregation during gamete formation the alleles of a pair segregate from each other such that a gamete receives only one of the two factors or one of the two alleles okay you can see here in the monohybrid cross that clearly see take self pollination these are the two dissimilar alleles during gamete formation what happens each gamete will get only one allele of a character that is the essence each gamete receives one allele of a character okay so law of segregation means separation during separation what happens the alleles separate out into what into the gametes so the gametes will receive only one allele of a character that is law of segregation so these two laws law of dominance and law of segregation were proposed by gregor mendel based on mono hybrid cross there is one more law proposed by mendel based on di hybrid cross that will be coming in the following sessions for now in the last videos in the last sessions i have already just taken one character height for mono hybrid cross today as per the request i have come with another example to taking the seed shape as the character okay seed shape here the character is height i have taken another character seed shape you know you remember mendel has taken how many characters seven different contrasting characters so here seed shape i have taken seed shape is either round or wrinkled among this round and wrinkled round is dominant so i should take the letter r round first letter of round r and i should put it as capital if i want to express it as dominant and small letter r if i am expressing the wrinkled form okay so parent is true breeding so both the alleles should be same here again true breeding both the alleles same wrinkled round crossed with wrinkled so in the gametes the alleles separate out and they join in their one generation here i have written capital r small r so can you guess what will be the shape of the seed if capital r and small r is coming together whether it will be round or wrinkled well if capital r is there there is no doubt that will be dominating so the seed shape will be round now what is the next step after cross pollination self pollination of f1 in self pollination of f1 again same parent is taken gametes the alleles separate out in the gametes and they join at random and at what ratio do you get the f1 sorry the f2 three dominant variety is to one recessive variety right so here three dominant means which one three are round and one is wrinkled okay so here i have given you two examples of mono hybrid cross i would suggest you to carry out the same crosses that means just write and do it with all the rest of the pairs all the rest uh, five pairs of characters so that you will become familiar with this how to do how these ratios are coming and it will be very very useful to you now let us move on to the next phase loss based on mono hybrid process over let's let's move on to the next phase as to how to find out the genotype of a plant we have got a plant 
we can we can easily get, uh, say it's phenotype because phenotype is the external appearance isn't it but we cannot say whether it is homozygous or heterozygous homozygous means whether the alleles inside are same or heterozygous the alleles are different let's see how to find out this difference going to learn about how to find the genotype any guesses suppose we have got a plant say capital t capital t tall another plant capital t small t this is also tall genotype and phenotype both are tall okay but then how to find out the uh, sorry genotype both are so phenotype both are tall how to find out the genotype so here you use a cross called as test cross from the word itself it is clear test what to test the genotype to test the genotype test cross to test the genotype for this test cross we take the sample this is the first sample and it will be crossed with homozygous recessive parent so test crosses crossing the progeny or crossing the plant with which parent homozygous recessive or with the recessive parent recessive is always homozygous only isn't it recessive is always homozygous so i am taking this first cross you see the result what is the second second step i should do separate out the alleles so here same alleles so this is same as our pure lines isn't it how to get the f1 so what i am i should i am getting here all tall plants all tall plants all tall plants means my test sample is homozygous tall if i am getting all tall plants what is the result i i, I should say homozygous tall which one is homozygous tall not this one but the sample that i have taken here is homozygous tall if i am getting the result like this but you take the next case i'm taking the next case this one i have to test this tall plant whether it is homozygous or heterozygous so taking that plant and test cross means crossing with which one crossing with recessive parent this is the recessive parent so again second step is separate out the alleles into gametes here also and then combining at random combining at random isn't it so what i am getting here two plants i will get tall and two plants i will get dwarf two plants are tall and two plants are dwarf so what is the ratio you can say one is to one ratio if i am getting one is to one ratio means the parent plant that i have taken here for testing is for testing is heterozygous so how to find out the genotype by test cross what is test cross crossing the f1 progeny or crossing the test plant the plant to be tested with 
versus a parent. So, if I get the ratio 1 is to 1, both tall and dwarf or both dominant and recessive, I am getting equal amounts. I, I can say that the, the test plant with me is heterozygous. Otherwise, if I am getting all tall, the test plant with me is homozygous. I hope you got it. So, this is one method of testing test cross. Uh, sorry, testing the genotype. There is also another method which is very simple. What is that? You self-pollinate the plant. You self-pollinate the plant. Suppose, so this is one method, test cross. Another method of testing genotype is self-pollination. Self-pollination. One method of testing genotype is test cross. Another method is self-pollination. You see here, take this plant first. I have to test this plant. Capital T, capital T. Self-pollination. Same thing. What will I get here? Gametes. They fuse. Again, I will get all tall plants. That means the sample is homozygous. The next case, capital T, small t. If I do self-pollination, what will I get? This is our self-pollination to get F2, isn't it? So, the same thing I will get. Tall plants. Tall plants I will get 3. Dwarf plant I will get 1. Same as our F2 ratio. So, they will be tall as well as dwarf. If tall and dwarf are coming in that, as a result of that cross, means our parent is heterozygous. If both are coming, if all are coming tall, means our parent is homozygous. So these are the two methods to find out by the genotype. Thank you for today and in the next sessions we will see more.